It is with great joy that we gather together as God's people to celebrate the ordination and the installation of Reverend Teklu Ketema as pastor of St. Paul's Lutheran Church. We extend a warm welcome to his family and friends worshiping with us today. Please know that you are a blessing to us and we are honored by your presence. And a special welcome also goes to those in the ministry who have joined us in this special occasion. I invite you to rise if you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. teaching them to observe all things. And lo, I am with you always. You may be
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose infinite power alone does great wonders, send down on your ministries and the congregations committed to their care the healthful spirit of your grace, and that they may truly please you. Pour on them the continual dew of your blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Old Testament lesson is found in the sixth chapter of Isaiah, beginning in the first verse. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorpost and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has taken, has taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. He said, Go and tell the people, Be ever hearing, but never understanding ever seeing but never perceiving. Make the heart of this people callous, make their ears dull and close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Then I said, For how long, Lord? And he answered, Until the cities lie ruined and without inhabitant, until the houses are left deserted and the fields ruined and ravaged until the Lord has sent everyone far away, and the land is utterly forsaken. And though a tenth remains of the land, it will again be laid waste. But as the terebinth and oak leave stumps when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. This is the word of the Lord. The gospel is found in the fourth chapter of St. Luke, beginning in the 16th verse. <clears throat> He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they asked? Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote the proverb, this proverb to me, Physician, heal thyself, and you will tell me, Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a, a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. 
And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow of a hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. This is the word of the Lord. We thank God for this moment, and it's special because in the life of this congregation, you prayed and we prayed together with you so that the Lord would send his shepherd so that we can continue working the kingdom's work. And we are very thankful to the Lord in this unique time. I never expect my mouth would be shut this way to <laughs> preach the gospel. But I hope you guys can hear me until that tongue moves, and if there is only three, three words left, we will proclaim that Jesus is Lord. So, um, on behalf of our district president, our bishop, me and uh, Pastor Dan will bring greetings to you. He was really looking forward to this time, but he is not able, um, so I just convey his greetings. And congratulations to Clue and the family. This is a very uh, unique day in your life. Right after the flu epidemic uh, in 1918, the church in America experienced amazing awakening and growth. Many university students set out to the globe to preach the gospel everywhere. Their motto was to share the gospel in their lifetime to the entire world. These are American boys and girls going everywhere in the world and change the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Makana Jesus Church, where we came from, some of us, including Taklu, has been reached out by European missionaries and American missionaries. And with the support from the indigenous leaders from the country, they established the church Makane Jesus, in 1959, with only 20,000 members. That Lutheran church body now has over 10 million Lutheran Christians in Ethiopia and seems to be the largest Lutheran church body in the world. So Taklu brings some interesting experience from the way how the Lord shaped his life and this vibrant evangelical churches in Ethiopia. Taklu grew up in an Orthodox Christian family, but while he was in high school, he came and joined this church called Makane Jesus, and he grew up there also serving the Lord. 
And according to his story, he was touched by how Jesus approached the social outcast, the poor, how he helped people in need. And he wanted to join Jesus in his way to the poor, in his way to the outcast and those marginalized. That's why he established a ministry called a holistic ministry to help the socially disadvantaged group of people. And amazingly, that's where he met his wife. You do God's business and God will take care of you, right? <laughs> he met his wife. She was uh, going there for mission, short-term uh, mission uh, engagement. And then now they had to talk about future life and they came together to this country. And the first time um, I saw and I met Taklu in North Carolina, Andy and Meseret are very famous people. They are sitting here. They don't want me to say that, I know. And that's why I am saying, exactly doing that. Um, I grew up really, literally, singing the gospel with their songs. They are amazing songwriters and gospel witnesses in our country. We were highly shaped by the songs. Uh, so, we know Endal Cacho. We know Meseret. We know Sion through them. But who is Taklu? So I did not know what kind of person Taklu would be to be part of the family and the church in North Carolina. So I found out that he was a secretary in, um, in the church for the council. So we start to talk about future ministry opportunities. And I honestly, I kept on asking, who is Taklu? Is, is he a good man? Um, he can be many things, but without taking much time, I came to realize that you can call him whatever names, good titles you can give him. But I saw a humble servant of the gospel in him. And I remember those days when he shared that his desire to go to the seminary, we were so confident that the Lord will use him. We did not know that he will come to, like within 30 minutes of my house, to serve. But we said, let's do whatever we can. But God took care of the process. Now we are here. Even while he was in the seminary, we had a meeting, you know, like a couple years ago or so. Many of us, he invited us to a coffee in his house. We are a number of them. Your student housing cannot hold us. But it wasn't only coffee. They provided full-fledged dinner. Uh, and uh, he started to shuttle us between the airport and the seminary without asking us or anyone else. A humble heart and mission is, is, is what God wants for us to focus on. It is the same story with Israelites. They were called so that they can join God's mission. But the problem with human beings is that we don't really easily join God in his work. So they failed many times. But the prophet Isaiah gives them a promise that the Messiah will come and fulfill God's mission in the state of Israelites. And that's what exactly Jesus did. Here he comes and he proclaims. He says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, so to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And Jesus declared that his mission will go beyond national, geographical, and seasonal boundaries and limitations. And that's what makes a little nervous some of his opponents, the Pharisees, when he declares that the day of Messiah has come. They seem to be okay. But when he emphasized that, the mission of the Messiah is to include other people groups, including Gentiles. And that became very difficult for them to understand. And they start to persecute him. 
Brothers and sisters, God invites us today and encourages St. Paul to join him in his mission. I and Pastor Dan and uh, some of us were here a few months back before all this uh, issue of epidemic um, took over. We came here, we discussed about mission, the opportunity this church has for mission in this community, and the challenge, the pain this congregation went through. We discussed, we hoped, we prayed, and here we are today. God showed up in a unique way, and the Lord touched your heart to welcome God's servant so that you can together join Jesus in his mission to the poor, in his mission to the outcast and the marginalized, all people groups, because that's the mission of the Messiah. And in this process, God will be with us. We're not alone. He stays with St. Paul Lutheran Church in Crafton, Maryland. He's not panicking, even putting a mask in heaven. He's not. He's not worried about the virus. He's the Lord of the virus. I know you can't say amen, right? <laughs> no. He's the Lord of all creation. He's the creator. He just sometimes wants to show his power by using one insignificant virus to silence us. So that we know we are not God. He is God. And he still uses in our weakness, even with the mask, to proclaim his gospel. He will stay with this, with this church. In this process of growing together with Pastor Teklu, this congregation will continue to grow and bring the good news to all people groups. And the Lord will restore whatever promise he has given to you as St. Paul family. There is a bright future in the name of Jesus for this congregation because it is not Pastor Taklu, it is not Pastor Dan, or anyone else. Jesus is leading the way. And he has risen from the dead. Hallelujah. He is our leader. He is our president. He is our like a member in Amharic word. The main guy who can go, the eternal one. And the last word, let me give you this promise. When Moses was asked by God to serve, Moses returned that question to God himself and said, God, okay, you want me to go to Egypt and uh, set the people free from slavery? But if the people ask me, who sent you to free us from the land of slavery? God told him, tell them, the one who sent you is, and his name is, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who will be. In Amharic language where Taklu and some of us come from, Yalanna yeminor ersu lakin. The one who is, the one who was, and the one who will be is the one who is sending St. Paul into the world. Amen? Amen. We're not alone, brothers and sisters. He is paving the way. He is leading the march. And with his leadership, victory is assured in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the congregation will say, Amen. Sorry, provoking you to say some vocal things here. We try to minimize interaction. Even we, as we do Apostle Creed, please flip uh, uh, to Apostle Creed, but say it in your heart. I will read it, just for the sake of being cautious. cautious. So we will um, confess the words of uh, uh, our confession with the words of the Apostle Creed. I will read it. You say it in your heart. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. If you don't mind, shall we rise and uh, still pray the Lord's Prayer in your heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Now we will go to the rite of um, ordination. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, Taklu Katama has been called by the Lord of the Church into the office of the Holy Ministry of the Word and Sacraments. He has been prepared for this ministry by careful study and prayer. He has been examined and declared ready and prepared to undertake this sacred responsibility, and by the guidance of God, the Holy Spirit, he has in the church's usual order been called to be pastor of St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Gambrils or Crofton, Maryland. According to apostolic practice, he is now presented to be ordained and consecrated to this office established by God. Those who are able, uh, please uh, stand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, by the blessed light of your holy word, you have led us to the knowledge of your Son. We humbly implore you to replenish us with the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may ever walk in the light of your truth and rejoicing with sure confidence in Christ, our Savior. Be brought to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. No. So, hear what the scripture says concerning the institution of the office of the holy ministry. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and uh, on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I think Dan is going to read that part for us. Go ahead. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And now we will hear the Holy Scripture concerning the responsibility of the office of the Holy Ministry. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure the hardships, do the work of an evangelist, discharge the duties of your ministry. Hear what the Holy Scripture says concerning the strength and promise of, uh, of God and what he gives to those in the office of the Holy Ministry. Continue in what you have learned and become convinced of 
because you know that those whom you, from whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scripture, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the person of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now we will ask Pastor to be, and he will be pastor of this church in a few minutes. In the presence of this congregation and before our Lord God, to whom you must give an account now and at the last day, I now ask you, do you acknowledge that the Lord has called you through his church into the ministry of word and sacrament? I do. Do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you accept the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, Nicene, and Athanasian creeds, as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the Word of God. I also reject all the errors they condemn. Do you confess the unaltered Augustberg Confession to be a true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, do you confess that the apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the, nine, in the 1580 Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith? Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in accord with the word of God. Do you solemnly promise that you will perform the duties of your office in accordance with these confessions and that all your preaching and teaching and your administration of the sacraments will be in conformity with the Holy Scripture and with these confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you faithfully instruct both young and old in the chief articles of Christian doctrine? Will you forgive the sins of those who repent? And will you promise to never divulge the sins confessed to you? Will you minister faithfully to the sick and dying? Will you de demonstrate the church as contact and needy ministry centered in the gospel? Will you admonish and encourage the people to a, li a lively confidence in Christ and in holy living? Yes, I will with the help of God. Finally, will you honor and adore the office of the holy ministry with a holy life? Will you be diligent in the study of the holy scripture and confessions? And will you be constant in prayer for those under your pastoral care? I will, the Lord helping me through the power and grace of his Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus pours out on you his Holy Spirit for this office and work that you may faithfully preach the gospel and administer the sacraments. Amen. Peace be with you, Taklu. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are, they are retained. Takluk Katama, I ordain you and consecrate you to the office of the Holy Ministry of Word and Sacraments in the one holy Christian and apostolic church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear brother in Christ, the Lord grant that you receive and keep these words in your heart so that you may be strengthened and encouraged in your labors. God gathers his church by and around his holy gospel 
and thereby also grants it grows and increase according to his good pleasure. That this may be done, he has established the office of the holy ministry into which you have been called by the church and are now ordained and consecrated by prayer and the laying of hands. So at this moment, I ask the congregation to stand up. Rather than normally we do, we invite some people to come and lay hands. We'll hold that for the time being. Hopefully there will be time for us to celebrate all this thing in a new way. But we have to do what the Lord has called us to do. So what you can do is just um, stretch your hands to bless him as we pray. Please, if you can. And um, if you don't mind, please pray with me this prayer. Pastor Taklu, we pray that the Lord help you as you join his mission. Amen. We may be seated. Thank you. And now it is time uh, for the family to come forward. And Pastor Dan is going to hand the stall as a sign of what the Lord has done in Taklu's life today. And uh, his wife, Zion or Zion, will place the stall on him. But I will read uh, this before that. The stall is a symbol of one who has been ordained into the office of public ministry as a pastor. Jesus said, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and low in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And uh, beloved in the Lord, the scripture says, one more chapter, uh, scripture verse, obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no advantage to you. Will you, the faithful, according to the church's public confession and speaking for the whole church, receive Taklu as a servant of Christ and minister of the word and sacrament? If so, then answer, we will. We will. We will. It's a beautiful story, right? <laughs> That's what Pastor Dave um, handed to our brother here. Let us pray. O oh, eternal merciful God, you have spoken through your own dear Son, Jesus Christ, saying that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, and that we should ask you, the Lord of the harvest, to send laborers into your harvest. Hear now our prayer on behalf of Taklu Katama, who on this day is ordained and consecrated to be your pastor in the church. Strengthen him mightily to take up the word of truth and to faithfully administer your holy sacraments. O Lord Jesus Christ, our great high priest, you gave your own life to be a holy and perfect sacrifice for us and for our salvation. Grant a heart zealous for your people and boldness to guide, comfort, admonish, and serve your congregation with gentleness and wisdom. Fill him you under shepherd with your love that in your name he will seek the saying and bear up the weak. Give him the heart, never, go, uh, never grow weary in the service of your flock. Holy Spirit, strengthen and keep Taklu in the word and truth and life and support him in every time of trouble and distress. Make his labors fruitful and when the day of the labor is ended, grant him to come with rejoicing before your presence to receive with all the saints his portion in eternal life. To you, O Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor, both now and forever. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Eklu Kamata have been called to be the pastor of St. Paul's Lutheran Church. I ask you now, in the presence of God, will you receive him? Will you show him that love, honor, and obedience in the Lord that you owe to the shepherd and teacher placed over you by your Lord Jesus Christ? Will you support him by your gifts and fervent prayer? If so, then answer, we will, with the help of God. Teklu Ketema, are you willing and ready to assume this trust and responsibility? I am. Teklu, with great joy, we install you as pastor of St. Paul's Lutheran Church in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we pray. Merciful God and Father, you have graciously promised that through the preaching of the crucified Christ, those who believe in him will be saved. By your Holy Spirit, grant grace to Teklu Katema, whom you have given to be the pastor of this congregation. Grant him readiness and steadfastness in this ministry, patience, understanding, and great zeal. Support and strengthen him in your service, that by your word, your church may be built and increased through your Son, our great High Priest, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Teklu, my new brother, go therefore and be a shepherd of the Good Shepherd's flock. Preach the word of God, administer the holy sacraments, offer a prayer for all the faithful. Instruct, watch over, and guide the flock among which the Holy Spirit has placed you. And do it not for earthly gain, but with great joy. For you have been called not to lordship, but to serve his flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. The almighty and most merciful God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. And I invite the congregation to applaud as a sign of affirmation. gifts so that through the power of the Holy Spirit you will be enabled to further equip us for the work of the ministry. Worship Committee, Jane Felsentrager. The Worship Committee presents you with this shell to be used in performing the sacrament of baptism. They also present you with this cruet and plate to be used in performing the sacrament of Holy Communion. To aid in planning the traditional services, we present you with a Lutheran service book. To aid in planning the contemporary services, we present you with this tablet. The Education Committee, Judy Tribby. The Education Committee presents you with a Growing in Faith Bible used in our Sunday School program. We also present you with Luther's Catechism for instructing the Confirmation class. And finally, we share with you a sample of an adult Bible study previously used. The Outreach Committee, Penny Courtney. Outreach is practiced at St. Paul's as a genuine team sport. Anyone can lead an outreach effort. Everyone supports it. A bicycle for a needy youngster at Christmas, wrapped and sent with a helmet too. Electronic games for a kid in the hospital battling cancer, sent. Books for U.S. troops overseas, sent. Holiday foods and toys at Thanksgiving and Christmas collected and delivered. 
the various ways St. Paul's extends Christian love in the community. School supplies, baby things, holiday food staples and gifts, support for the local food pantry, and contributions for the local Lutheran Mission Society. Wherever we know there is a need, the St. Paul's family teams up to help extend Christ's love to those who can use a helping hand. We are indeed well blessed to be a blessing to others. Welcome to the St. Paul's family team. Fellowship Committee, also Penny Courtney. This basket represents the warm hospitality and fellowship we hope to extend to everyone who visits St. Paul. Mugs and good coffee, homemade fruit bread and jam, a candle for your window, and because this is Maryland, your first container of Old Bay Spice and your Old Bay potato chips. We hope you like them. Welcome to St. Paul's. Welcome to Maryland. <laughs> The proper committee, Del Genstrom chairman. Um, okay. The proper co property committee presents you with the keys to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. <laughs> you don't want to be locked out. The website committee, Patrice Genstrom chairman. The website committee presents you with your email address and your pastor's page on the stpaulscrofton.com website. Financial Secretary, Michelle Chrislip. As a member of St. Paul's Lutheran Church, the Financial Secretary presents you with a box of church envelopes. <laughs> you are now officially a member. Um, back. Uh, as President of the Board of Directors of St. Paul's, I present you with a copy of the Constitution and the Bylaws. Finally, those that plan today's service, Michelle Angeli, Charlton Henry, and Jane Felsentreger, present you with a stole as a memento of this day. On one side of the stole is Welcome to St. Paul's, and on the other, July 12, 2020. On the reverse side is a cross in case you would want to wear it while conducting a worship service. The stole was made for us by Joan Spencer. Here. Um, Pastor, thank you. Welcome. Sing my 
God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us, and your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the mercy, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and is by his authority, I therefore de declare to you the entire forgiveness, forgiveness of your, all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. You have revealed your glory as the glory of your Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, equal in majesty, and undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body given for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, He gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Please take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given in today's for your sins. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Christ. 
strengthen and preserve you in body and soul for life everlasting. Amen. We we'll continue with the special music. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look unto you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Yes, I was told we are all invited. Everyone is welcome to stay. In the parking lot, we have a fellowship time. Continue with the closing hymn, I guess.